Hello, everybody. I'm limping a little bit because I played soccer or football and uh, hurt my ankle. So bear with me on that. I don't think we're going to ask you to do jumping jacks on stage. No jumping jacks on stage. So you're probably good, free from injury. Happy DevCon week, everybody. How's it going? Yeah. This is my first, this is my first event. And so yeah? I'm like yeah, trying to kick it off up. strong. Um, Okay, congrats. Base hit 1 billion transactions as of this morning. A billion transactions. <laughs> Happened way faster than I was expecting. But I, I think mean, next year we're going to do 100 billion. Hell so. yeah. All right, 100 billion this time next year. You said it yourself right here. Okay. All right. Um, before we jump into all that, let's like rewind a little bit. This is ENS's first ever Friends Day. Woo <laughs> woo! Um, and uh, we are going to be talking about building the base layer for our digital identity. Um, and so I did some digging to your background, Jesse. Before you even got into crypto, you were involved in building in the digital identity space. So your lore with digital identity goes far Deep. beyond. Yep, beyond crypto. So what initially excited you about building digital identity? And why do you think we're better positioned now to realize that vision? Yeah. So the first company I started when I was in college was called Clef, which uh, cl the word Cle in key, uh, you, get, you can see it there. Um, and what we were building was passwordless two-factor authentication. And you can look at kind of like pass keys today uh, or almost like uh, Ethereum wallets today. We gave people a private key on their phone. We then built a distributed uh, public key infrastructure where we actually kind of uh, distributed public keys across a bunch of infrastructure uh, providers, people who are participating in our network. These were folks like Bitfinex, BitMEX, uh, other vendors who were looking for secure logins. And then when users held their phone up to their computer, it authenticated their public private key with the public key, they got logged in. Um, very cool. I think it was probably about 10 years too early. Uh, and I think a lot of the architecture and infrastructure that we were building then has now been built like in the right way with Ethereum, with the, the um, like uh, uh, wallet infrastructure we have today, um, with pass keys that are coming online, with smart wallets. Um, and so I think mostly it was a timing thing where we just had to build a bunch of infrastructure. And I think that's been the phase we've been in for the last decade. It's been infrastructure building, it's been slow, it's been grueling. You know, we hear all of the tweets about like, oh, people are over-investing in infrastructure and under-investing in apps. And I, I don't really know if that's necessarily true. Like, we've had to build incredible infrastructure for a decade. It's just that just in the last six months, with the combination of low-cost block space in layer twos, plus better wallet infrastructure with smart wallets, plus real on-chain identities powered by ENS, powered by EFP, powered by Farcaster, that's what's making it now possible for developers to build apps. And so, yeah, of course, now we got to swing the pe pendulum a little bit. We got to build apps. We got to build experiences that people want. But that infrastructure investment is what has now made it possible for us to build those world class products. Yeah. So, infrastructure, we're in a lot better place now. But then there's still the concept of on-chain sovereign identity. And so I know you um, like you go to DC a lot to speak with folks on the Hill to maybe explain this concept. I think, I think you tweeted about explaining this to your grandparent. I was like creeping on your tweets and I think I found that. So infrastructure is there, but how do you explain it to people to actually fully embrace that concept? Yeah, I mean, the, the way I think about this is really explaining it through the lens of online versus on-chain or offline ver or off chain versus on chain in the online world the internet that we live in today um, raise your hand if you uh, have been a developer and you've been like frustrated by a review process for apple or something like that. Yeah, a lot of people. Raise your hand if you're a creator and you've put your creativity, the thing that is literally your life force onto a creative platform and then have basically gotten scraps while that creative platform has made billions of dollars. Seeing some raised hands. Like we are trapped in the internet right now which is controlled by a small number of large corporations who have outsized influence, who can deplatform us at their will, who profit off of our creativity, and who take our identity information and have us put it in their walled garden, in their account, which they gracefully store for us in their database and give us access to as long as we follow their rules. And that kind of sucks. It means that creators earn less. It means that developers earn less. It means that we have less freedom. It means that we can be deplatformed at any time. And I think when we're talking about this idea of self-sovereign uh, identity, it, there are real value props here. It's like literally you can no longer be deplatformed. 
whether that's by a single corporation or by a you know totalitarian government who's going to shut off your internet and take away your you know centralized identity account. Uh, it's about uh, you can no longer be spied on um, because your messages are not in a centralized database like Telegram. It's about when you create associated with your identity, you earn 10x more because instead of the profit sharing be 95% to centralized platform in terms of monetizing your content and 5% to a creator fund that they kind of distribute out their will, you can see it, it's going on chain and 95% of the value is going back to you. And so when we're talking about self-sovereign identity, I think really what we're talking about is the next generation of the internet that's gonna be built by the people, that's gonna be built for the people, and that's gonna be better for all of us, whether we're creators, developers, or, you, or people, I hate to say the word users, it's not users, we're people, who deserve to build our identities, to own our identities, and to benefit from this new internet that all of us are gonna build together. Yeah, preach. Woo! <laughs> Energy is high, are you Hey, I told you, this is what, I'm coming out firing, first one. <laughs> all right, no more espressos for you today. Um, all right, so now let's bring it back to like what you're actually doing with that. So uh, Base Names, Base Names launched this past summer. Um, talk to me, what inspired you to create Base Names and where do you see this project heading in the future? Yeah, so uh, l I've been thinking about identity for a long time. When I joined Coinbase, I, I think I wrote in the blog post, I was like, the th single reason why I'm most excited to be joining Coinbase is to work on building a global identity that's on-chain. <laughs> I didn't use on-chain at the word, it said crypto, but like I've been thinking about this for a long time. Um, I led the consumer businesses at Coinbase for a long time and so it had a lot of kind of I interaction with folks who were um, you know, on the front lines building consumer products. Uh, and then as we started thinking about uh, how we were going to bring Coinbase on chain, which kind of became my mandate in 2021, um, I took three months off and then I came back and started being like, okay, what does it actually look like? We iterated through a bunch of ideas and one of the themes that kept back to us was identity. And the reason why was because as we were kind of working down this stack that you can think about that now it's actually materialized with base, we were thinking, okay, like let's say we want to build an app store. What do we need? Well, we need app identity and we need user identity because otherwise we can't do distribution effectively. Let's say we want to do advertising. What do we need? Well, we, we need app identity. Fuck. We need user identity. Fuck. And literally, we went through a year of like working our way down this stack and at the end of it, we got to the identity piece. And we were like, okay, let's build, at the time we'd been building like CBID, some other team had been building CBID. I was like, it's cool, but it's off chain and there, it feels like this needs to be on chain and sovereign. And we need to figure out how to link more to it. So, so in August of 2022, I, I wrote this whole uh, identity strategy, which was like, we're going to build an identity. It's going to link together all these identities. It's going to be built on top of ENS. Um, it's going to link all of your wallet addresses. It's going to link all of your attestations. And this is going to be like the final building block that we need as an industry in order to enable X, Y, and Z that was higher up in the stack. And I went to the executive team. This was like the fourth time, by the way. At this point, I was like doing weekly reviews with the, Brian and the chief product officer. It was the, the worst time of my life. So stressed. Like They were like, have you innovated yet? I was like, I'm trying, you guys. So hard. Uh, but I went to them with this idea. And, <laughs> and I think through a collective decision-making process, all of us were kind of like, yeah, we agree that this is something good to do. But like, it's like it's really hard to sell identity. Like, and I imagine a lot of people in this room have been feeling that, like, identity as a value prop, especially inside of, like, large corporations, it's, like, it's a platform investment that you need to make that can enable a bunch of other things, but I think it can be hard for people to reason about that from first principles and think about the value. And we'd already been going through a ton of thrash, and so our decision was actually, like, that's a really cool idea, we should do it eventually, but, like, maybe let's shut down Jesse's team and have him, like, go and do other things. And so we shut down the team, and in the like weeks after that, which Wait, was the identity team, when there was, this was kind of like Jesse exploratory team. The identity team was still building; they were still building CBID. This was like Jesse going off on one. Um, we shut the team. I then went to DevCon, and me and the three people who had, who we kind of like trimmed the team down to, we did this thing called On Chain October, where we were like, let's just build some cool stuff on chain. And we started thinking, okay, we've been all the way down to the stack, and at the bottom was identity, but maybe there's one more layer underneath identity. Maybe before we can build the identity layer, we need to build the infrastructure layer, the platform 
that can make it setting, possible. You have to say the base layer. The base layer. <laughs> <laughs> the base layer, the platform that can make it possible for us to build identity, for us to build advertising, for us to build an app marketplace, for us to enable all these people to build the next generation of on-chain products. And we launched the first version of Base, which was an internal testnet called BaseNet, like in a week. Came to DevCon, listened, learned, and then left DevCon and we're like, we have to do this. And so really, like that was December 2020. Uh, two, we launched the testnet in 2023. We launched the mainnet in, in uh, August 2023. And pretty much the second we launched the mainnet, I went back to the team and said, okay, the next thing that we need to do is identity. Because now that we have this platform, we just got to work our way all the way back up the stack. Like we already spent two years going through the idea maze and now we know where we need to execute. And so we kicked off building base names, really as the idea of creating a coherent single identity for the broader base economy, but also the entire on-chain economy that could be cheap, it could be accessible, it could be global, um, and it could serve as a shelling point to aggregate enough of this really incredible signal that's emerging on-chain to make it so that both developers could build better products because they would know who they're actually interacting with and be able to build more customized, more engaging experiences for them. And users could have a more seamless experience um, because they would have a sense of self and they would be able to augment that self and grow their experience through the lens of their identity on-chain. We launched that in, I guess, at the beginning of uh, on-chain summer, so like May of this year. Today there's, or no, maybe it was like later in on-chain summer. Uh, I guess it was like August. Um, and anyway, today there's 500,000 base names claimed. People are, like, we were just all, we, yeah, woo! And to be clear, base names are built on ENS. We've been contributing uh, base names, lead engineer on the smart contract side, just became an ENS IP reviewer. We're really proud of that. We're implementing ENS 19. We are like co-authoring a lot of the uh, work that's going put into Namechain. And we're so proud to be building alongside Namechain. And I think we're seeing it play out. Like we've been on this world tour for the last uh, week and a half and we're about to go after this to Singapore and Manila next week. Uh, we were in Kenya and we were in India. People came with their base names printed on shirts. People made swag with their base names. They're putting them in their Twitter profiles and their Warpcast handles. Yeah. They are identifying with this. And not only are we seeing it on the consumer side, we're actually seeing it on the app side as well, where apps are realizing, oh, I can get app.base.eth, and that's starting to become a central point for who I am. I can pin my frames there that can drive users to me. So I feel like we're really starting to see our thesis play out, and now it's really all about, okay, what next? Like, how do we continue to grow this? And I think there's some really hard challenges we need to solve. We need to solve, how do we start to link multiple addresses together under one identity? Does that happen through a base name? Does it happen through a smart wallet? How do we link those things together? We need to solve how do we make it so attestations and other identity uh, kind of imprints can span across all of those addresses so that I can say, okay, this is who I am. I got this address in, uh, attestation here, but if I'm in my hot wallet or I'm in another app, I can use that attestation too. Um, we also need to solve uh, how do we do all of this in a way that can be public because a lot of the important stuff that's happening in identity with so is social and for there it's really important. Like you want to be able to see all your addresses that are public so people can see who you are, they can see your holdings, they can see what you've been doing. But we also need to figure out how to do it in a way that's private. So you can verify things about who you are in a private way to applications and you can uh, have private addresses that aren't linked to the public eye, but you can still operate over or you could prove things about. And I think if we can solve those three things, multiple addresses, spanning those addresses with identity metadata, and then introducing privacy so that you can move publicly and privately, then I think we have an identity system that is better than any identity system that exists in the world. And this has been a big thing for me. We can no longer say, oh, this is good for crypto. We have to say this is better, 10x better than every other product on the market. I think that that's what we can do with ENS. Yeah, yeah that's a, and that's a great Woo! point to set. Um, well, you set me up great for my sort of next segue. So you just came back from, I guess you're like in the middle of your base around I'm the world. I'm in the world. middle. We okay. planned the base around the world. So we yeah. did, we flew from uh, New York to Kenya, yeah. from Kenya to Bangalore, to Bangalore yeah. to Bangkok, Bangkok to Singapore, yeah. Singapore to Manila, and then home. 21 so, days, yeah. ending on my birthday, long flight. But I get a double birthday because I go across <laughs> the international dateline. Um, so, it's like completely so one of the themes that we've been talking about is like crypto, I mean, not 
you know, just in general. Crypto is global from day one. And have, so you're in the middle of your base around the tour. What common themes have you observed across builders from so many diverse countries and cultures, but all congregate them to being excited at building on chain? I, I think the biggest common theme is that in every country we go to, there is a shared feeling that the systems today are broken. And it cuts across a bunch of different axes. Like in the United States, I think there's less of that feeling around finance and money because our, our systems are working relatively well, although I'd say they're actually broken for small businesses and other, other categories. But you definitely hear it from creators. Like when you talk to creators in the United States, they're like, this sucks. Like, yeah, we get likes and tweets, but like... We don't get paid and our income is totally variable and we feel like we're at the mercy of these huge corporations who are black boxes to us. Like that system is broken. In Kenya, um, I, I almost feel like we go down Maslow's hierarchy of needs a little bit. It's like the, the systems are broken at almost a, like, a fundamental level from a trust perspective. Yeah. Like one of the things we heard is like it's a low trust environment. People are really excited about how can you use transparency to increase trust. Um, the one, another thing is that the current payment systems are very disconnected from the global um, economy because you have things like M-Pesa, which work really well, but they aren't plugged in elsewhere. So it's like, how do we use better money? How can people save? And also, how can people just earn and like be employed in this new economy and have the opportunity to earn? Um, in India, similar, uh, UPI is, is very advanced there from a payments perspective, but you hear the same things around, we want to build globally, we need access to capital. And we see on-chain as a way of growing our access to capital, bringing in more resources, and being able to reach a more broad audience. And so I, I'd say that the prevailing theme across all of these different places has been that the systems are broken, but the systems are, are uh, broken almost, they're broken in the same ways everywhere, but it's more noticeable in different places depending on kind of like what the biggest challenges are in those places. And so I think one of the really important opportunities for us as an industry as we go towards uh, the next year and, and the many years ahead is figuring out how do we contextualize our work and how do we contextualize our products in a way that people can understand. So they can understand, oh, this is gonna solve your creator problem, or this is gonna solve your payments problem, or this is gonna solve your access to capital problem. Because I think at times folks can get very overwhelmed by this monolith of crypto. But what I heard also again and again from creators and builders and developers was that if they find one thing that solves a problem for them, that gives them the entry point into this new economy. And then once they get into the new economy, they're like, oh my God, you're telling me there's a new global economy where I make more money, where I have more freedom, where I can make friends from around the world and we can build a new internet that works better for everyone? Sign me up. Like who wouldn't? But because I think there's so much baggage with this idea of crypto, we need to find those like single entry points that are really, really clear value props that solve real problems and that give people a feeling of, of inclusivity, of this is for you. This is built to solve your problems. And then from there, they can springboard and platform to something much bigger. Yeah, yeah. and to your point, it's not that this is better than an, an, another crypto solution. It's that this is better than a status quo right now anywhere. This right? is 10x better yeah. than the painful thing that you and your country and your communities have been dealing with for the last decade, for the last 100 years, however long. Because, again, it's, we can no longer say this is good for crypto. It has to be this is 10x better than the existing things on the market. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so earlier we touched on base hitting a billion transactions. And it's funny because, uh, you know, it's very classic uh, Jesse, but billion transactions, but we're still day one. So when do you move on from the day one? When, do you, when can you really feel comfortable saying we're... we're day we're, two. Yeah, day two. I when mean, is day two? I, I don't think ever... I mean, just culturally, like if I think about the ba what it means to be based and like the culture we're trying to build, we've kind of distilled it down to, to five uh, values. It's like we work super freaking hard because it's not going to be hard, easy to change the world. We're relentlessly optimistic about the future. We're not afraid to try new things and push boundaries with creativity. Uh, we put the team over the individual. And wow, I'm blanking on the first one. Uh, and we do the right thing. Thank you. So you got someone in the background. Yeah, let's go. That's awesome. Um, and I think like built into that culture is 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 a feeling of like like we can never feel like our work is done. 
Like, if we are successful, our work will outlive all of us. Yeah. Like, we are building systems and change on the scale of hundreds of years. And so, bringing every day the humility of this is day one, and we need to show up today like we showed up a decade ago when I started working on crypto, I think that that's just a part of our culture. Now, if I had to... <laughs> Yeah, agreed. Um, if I had to say, like, when do I think we make progress, I think that, the, like, what I'm looking for and what I'm challenging our team and what I'm challenging builders on is we're still in a phase where we're not growing week over week. Yeah. Like, some things are, like, I would say stable coin payments are growing week over week, but in terms of having, like, raw product market fit that's driving 7% week over week growth, I don't think we're there. And I think that we have all of the pieces now to get there. And so I think the thing that I'm looking for is in 2025, like who and, and how do we break out? So it's like every week we're putting up new milestones of like new people onboarded, new apps deployed, new belt builders onboarded. So that by the end of 2025, when we look back and we say, okay, base did 100 billion transactions, we brought 100 million people on chain, we're growing 7% week over week, like clearly this is gonna get to a billion people in the next one to two years. Like that to me is like, okay, now we're on the up curve. And I have this chart that I put up every single time I give a talk. It's like literally, we are going to hit this moment and then it's gonna be off to the races. And it's, it's kind of hard to tell, like, have we hit it yet? Like, it, did it hit last week? Did it hit this week? Is it going to hit next week? But we are so, so close to this point where we have enough things that have product market fit that we have across the board growth in a real, real viral way. And that, for me, is the thing that I'm most focused on with our team across the board. Yeah. So 1 billion transactions now, 1 billion users next. If you were to, you know, like just take a guess, what is the line of sight that in terms of like what is the breakout? Is it the is it product? Is it really getting people like what is it that leads to that? I think that I think that it is integrating all of the infrastructure that we have today to build viral consumer and payments, uh, social and payments products. And we we will we are very focused on social and payments, in particular on base. Payments because when you look at the data, it is far and away the clearest product market fit in crypto. And when you talk to people and you get qualitative and quantitative evidence in emerging markets in particular, the payments and the economic systems are broken and it's such a clear value prop. And so I think that that's really, really important with payments and we're doing a lot of things there. The thing that I'm most excited and most focused on is we are getting local currency stable coins, including a Thai bot, that is uh, in a regulatory sandbox right now on base around DevCon where you can go use a Thai bot on base to pay merchants, we are going to get every single local currency in the world on base so that everyone can onboard into their sovereign local currency and not have to get dollarized, not have to even get Ethereumized. They can just be. And then if they want to borrow dollars or hold dollars or they want to use Ethereum, they can, but we can massively simplify the experience for users and developers and localize it to them because I think today it's too scary. And so payments is a huge, huge priority for us, but the problem with payments is that it's very slow growing, particularly in regions where they have existing payment systems like Venmo in the United States or M-Pesa in Kenya or UPI in India. So if you look at things like Cash App or even Venmo, which have grown very quickly, it's more like 40% year-over-year growth. It's linear growth that takes somewhere between 10 and 20 years to do a full flip. And so for us, payments is not going to be enough to grow the scale of growth that we want to get to in the next two to three years. And that's where social comes in. If you look at what has driven consumer product growth over the last decade, it is across the board social products. Some of them have payments built in, but it's messaging, it's feed, it's creation, it's apps, that is where growth has been for the last decade. And now just in the last year, with low-cost layer twos, with better wallet infrastructure like the smart wallet, and with identity like ENS, EFP, Farcaster, we finally have the tools to build world-class social products. And so that's what we want to see people doing. We want to see people taking shots on goal with consumer social products because it's really, really hard to get a consumer social product that works. But my gut tells me that once we get one that works, because it's all an open graph, people are just gonna layer on new innovations and it's gonna be like wildfire and we're just gonna grow, 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 grow until the entire world's on chain. And I think it's gonna happen in the next w one to three years. Okay. Yeah, I think, I think that people have been lulled into a false sense of uh, slowness by the last decade of infrastructure building, but the app and consumer and viral social adoption phase of crypto will be 
incredibly different than the infrastructure building phase of crypto. And I think it's going to happen much faster than people expect. We're going to hit the S curve in the you know technological revolution. Um, so taking a step back, so Base was launched last August, so it's barely a year old, and I feel like you've just been go, 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 go. Go, 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 yeah. go. Um, but just to take a step back and just reflect on the last like year plus, like I don't know, three months, um, what has been the most surprising thing to you in this journey of like building Base and onboarding builders and meeting people? I think the most surprising thing for me has been how quickly and... Um, uh, uh, like speed and quality of global builder understanding and adoption of base. Like literally, we just flew to Kenya and to Bangalore, and in each of those countries, I'd never, I'd, I've been to uh, uh, Nairobi before because my brother lives there. I have some connection and spend time. Base has no team there now we now we're starting to we just hired someone to lead based india and um, we're hiring someone for based kenya and every other country if you're looking for a role we're hiring a based leader in every country but no leader there until very recently we had hundreds of builders show up who were building on base participating in the build-a-thon creating new apps and not only that they like someone shouted out do the right thing in the back of the audience they could like recite our values they like were telling us they were bringing the world on chain they were talking about building a new on-chain economy that's going to increase innovation, creativity, and freedom. And so the speed at which the like mind virus of base has spread through builder communities around the world in places that I would have expected eventually we get there has completely blown my mind. And I think the thing that has, has made that happen, which has also been pleasantly surprising, has been our ability and willingness to lean into on-chain native infrastructure and use things like base names to give people an identity and use things like rounds to reward people in a decentralized way and use things like Farcaster and Warpcast to build community in a way where people could feel like they could create a new platform and gain leverage in a new way. And so I think that combination of like, Go, 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 go. I mean, like me and the base team, we, I don't know if folks have seen the videos, but we're like zone five constantly, like in the like sports <laughs> analogies, like our hearts beating out of our chest. But I think that's one part of it. I think the second part of it is like people are ready for change and they're looking for something. The third part of it is that the mission of building a new global economy is incredibly inspiring. People want to be a part of it. And then finally, the usage and embrace of new on-chain tools has just been such a like kind of uh, fuel on top of that fire. Yeah. Um, well, I can't see, I can't wait to see what the next year brings for, for you, for base. I hope you do remember that zone five heart rate is not the best. Can't do that for forever. Heart. It's zone okay. three through yeah, five. Yeah. And mostly we're sometimes and, and we in zone need two. You to, we need you to like continue evangelizing and like doing this, you know, so, um, but yeah, but Everyone, honestly, we're so lucky to have Jesse in our ecosystem. Um, give it up for Jesse. Give it Thanks. up for Base. Give it up for what they're doing. And Thank and you. I'll just say, I can't wait to be here again next year, yeah. wherever uh, Friends Day is. And um, I'm just thank you all, especially folks who are here building ENS. Like I see some folks nodding heads who I know. I know you have been in the trenches for a long time, and that hasn't been easy. And we feel so grateful and blessed to be getting to build with you and to be getting to build open source on open standards, to create open markets, um, and to get to build on your, stand on your shoulders with things like base names. Uh, because we really would not have been able to go zero to one on an identity product that's interoperable everywhere out of day one that just works without ENS. So a huge round of applause and thank you to ENS and everyone here for all the builders. All right. Awesome, thanks y'all. See you around, I'll be at DEF CON all week. <laughs>